Hello, uh, welcome back to my Mantis channel, and hey, I actually uploaded two videos back to back, one a week, so, um, let's try to keep that going. I also realized I say um a lot, and I'm working on it, I'm so sorry. I'm working on it. Today, I wanted to talk about ghost mantis care. I had a lot of people really happy about my orchid mantis video, and I said in that video that I bring ghosts next, so I brought some ghosts. Um, the first ghost I'm going to show to you is sort of the queen here. Uh, she's called Hera. I didn't name her, but it's a good name. I'm, I'm into it. Uh, she's kind of interesting because she was raised by a coworker of mine, come on, at my uh, office. And so she's been in a variety of different setups. Uh, hopefully the camera might focus on her. I can't see if it is or not, and I apologize if it's just blurry. She is an adult female ghost mantis. I've had her since she was I2. Um, she has already laid one ooze for me, although it wasn't fertilized because her boyfriend hasn't matured yet. I'm feeding him as fast as I can, I'm waiting on him, but I know that she's going to lay me some eggs in the future once he's ready to mate. Uh, she's a great girl. She's beautiful, as you can see. And uh, I've had her since she was itty bitty. I've had her, I don't know, probably six months now. She's a great little friend. All ghost mantises are great little friends. So uh, let's get right into it. We'll start with housing. I mentioned that she had sort of a situation where she was raised in a bunch of different houses. That is true. She started out in a mason jar setup, which I think I detailed in my how to make a cheap mantis nymph terrarium video. I'll link that down below or in the info bar, wherever. I don't know how YouTube works anymore, I'll figure it out. Then she graduated from that to a half gallon size mason jar with the same lid. And now she's in one of my townhouses. Once I mate her, she will get upgraded to her own little house. Uh, not in the row with all the other townhouses, but she'll have a whole little curriculum just for herself so she can relax and lay as she needs. I try to give my uh, broody females as much peace and quiet as I can so as not to disturb them. Sorry, she's just so cute. Hello. Her antenna are going crazy. She thinks I'm gonna feed her. I will feed her in a minute. Ghosts make a really great starter mantis because they're not as particular as a lot of other mantises. I would say that they are probably a one to two star difficulty mantis. Remember my graphic from before? I hope I put one in here. Uh, if I didn't, again, humor me pretend I did. I, I designed it in Photoshop, so I have the template right here. Gosh, she's just so cute. I really love how interactive these guys are, which is one reason they make such a great starter mantis. They're very relaxed so that you can hold them. They're less, they're more likely to try to run from you than to try to pinch you as some mantids are a little more aggressive and defending themselves. Instead of threat displaying, I've only ever had my ghosts play dead instead, where they'll just throw themselves on the ground and curl their legs up and pretend to be dead. A little startling the first time because you think maybe they are dead. They'll, they'll sleep there for quite a while. But no, they just decide that uh, pretending to be dead is a safer method of keeping the predators away. And she's looking at my face. It's a little disconcerting. I've kept ghosts successfully in a variety of containers. Right now I've got one here in this 32 ounce deli cup, which I brought him out in my orchid video as well. Uh, this is her mail, so hopefully soon he'll be ready for her. I've, as I've mentioned, I kept her in a townhouse setup. There's some super rooms at the bottom that she didn't finish that I need to get out of there. Uh, her, she has a flower also, she's not just in there, bald. I just took it out to get her out. I've also got two ghosts in a condo setup. All of these I sell in my store um, if you're interested. These two are hopefully a mated pair. They're quite young at the moment, but I'll get them out later. You could keep them in a netted cube with a plant in it. I personally don't like that because I do like to keep them a little moister than say my violins, but I think you could get away, away with that pretty easily. You just put like a potted plant in there and spritz it every once in a while. No problem. You can keep ghosts in just about everything as long as they have something to grip on. They do have a little bit of trouble with the plastic now and again. They get quite a bit heavier as they mature, and so they have trouble grasping onto the plastic. They can do it, but they're not as good at it as, as like a panther or an orchid even. Um, so I make sure that they have something to climb on, and they will climb. They come in a variety of colors too. Uh, my girl here is really brown, 
my other girl here I'm hoping is going to go green. She's kind of a paler greenish brown color at the moment. Uh, my male looks just about like her, but he's a little grayer. And then this boy here is much darker and much less saturated. So they come in a variety of colors. I think usually what people say is they come in brown, black, green, and blonde. Uh, but I, it's not like reptile morphs. They don't have specific names. We kind of just make shit up. So, <laughs> it's true. We just make shit up. Their colors are gorgeous. They are vibrant and beautiful and so strikingly different. It's, it's amazing, honestly, how pretty these guys are and because of that they're very prevalent in the hobby they're pretty easy to get a hold of 10 12 15 bucks maybe uh, you can usually buy them in groups a lot of people will sell them as a mated pair so you can get a male and a female they're really easy to sex even at a young age because they have this little crown on top of their head their little head crest males have a very skinny long crooked head crest while females are shorter and broader and it's super easy to sex them while they're young, so you can get stuff like a, a L4, L5 mated pair, and that's what these guys are here. So let me put her back so I can get out some of the other nymphs, and we can talk about humidity, which is of course, come on, don't be mad, which is of course kind of everybody's biggest question these days is, uh, how often do I need to spray my mantis to prevent it from dying of dehydration? These guys are pretty easy in that regard. They don't need sprayed nearly as often as, say, an orchid. Uh, I don't spray them as often as I do my panthers. They're from Madagascar, so they're a pretty dry species in general. Here's a little male. Let me see. He's pretty cute. He's still quite young, and he's fat, so I think he's going to molt soon. So I'm going to not bother him too much. Let me get my female out. I did mention that they play dead, but I found, for the most part, if you handle them fairly regularly, they're more likely to just get used to you. So here's my little female. If she doesn't end up turning green, I think she'll probably stay this pretty light brown color, uh, which I'm really excited for. Let me put her back. Get off. There we go. As most species, the males do mature a little faster than the females, but it's not nearly as significant as it is in orchids or spiny flower mantises or violins. They're pretty close I found so while you can breed two from the same ooth, I don't I don't recommend inbreeding, but it is actually possible with this species. Um, so humidity, I spray my ghosts three times a week, roughly every other day. It doesn't quite work out for three times a week because weeks have seven days in them, but roughly every other day, I spray them and I spray them about. I don't I want to say half as heavily as I do my orchids. So I'll spray them five or six times with my little mister, um, which is a very fine, it's almost like a glass cleaner bottle in size, but it's just made for water. And so I spray them. I spray my adults a little more often than I do my nymphs, and I spray my nymphs more often when I suspect that they are going into pre-molt because that helps them molt. They have so many leaf-looking bits on them that it is a little easier for them to get stuck than some other species, but they're pretty good at getting out of it. So in that regard, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Temperament-wise, um, they do get a little shy. They can be intimidated by food easily if it's too big or if you're tongue feeding, they can get startled by the tongs. And once they're startled, they usually are done for a few minutes. They are not interested in what you have. They just wanna pull up their little raptorials and hide, which is okay, but it can make feeding a little bit tricky if you don't have access to flying prey. I particularly often feed these guys my meal worms or, or not my uh, wax moths, sorry, my, my wax worms, which I let pupate into wax moths. You can buy those at most big box pet stores, but you will have to pupate them yourself, which can be a little complicated. You can buy house flies online. The nymphs can eat flightless fruit flies, but once they get a little bit bigger, they'll need bigger prey. You can get them used to tong feeding, and the majority of mine are used to it, so I don't have too much trouble. But this boy here refuses to eat off of tongs. So they can be a little bit shy with hand feeding and so if you're trying to feed things like mealworms or locusts or crickets or anything that you have to physically hand them, you may have a little bit more trouble with it. So what I usually do if I'm having too much trouble is I pinch the heads of the prey that I'm feeding, not only so to make them move less, but so that there's juices around the head of the prey and then I kind of just stick it up in their little mouth parts and usually they'll get excited about it and grab it after a while. But since we're on, we're talking about food a little bit, I'll bring up again that I personally like to not to feed crickets. There's um, some controversy about whether or not it's safe to feed crickets, and that, so I just choose not to. But it really comes down to where you source your crickets 
from a lot of crickets from big box pet stores may not be as clean as you'll need them for your mantids. I also have trouble getting ghosts to eat crickets because their legs are all over the place and they don't like being touched by their prey, which will make them recoil and then not want it anymore. So I prefer to keep them towards moths or flies or even mealworms. Um, wax worms are okay as a treat now and again. They'll eat anything that any other mantis will, but they can be a little bit shyer about it. Sometimes you have to start them off on smaller prey than you would mantids of comparable size. But overall, they're not too difficult to get to eat. Sometimes you just gotta throw something in there and wait for them to go get it. That's one reason they make a really good starter mantis, though, is that they will pretty much eat anything, even if it takes them a little while. They're pretty hardy. They do like a little bit of humidity, but not nearly as much as, such, say, an orchid or something a little more complex. They don't need any additional heat. I keep mine just at room temperature, and while my room is a little bit warmer, they're okay at 70, 72, 75 degrees, or, and even a little warmer than that. They have no problem just being in room temperature. If it's much cooler than that, you may want to get them a little lamp or something, but I wouldn't extend. I wouldn't worry about it unless you're down to like 65 degrees. And even then, something like a hermit crab under tank heater might be enough, especially if you're keeping them in a plastic container. Those are the only under tank heaters rated for plastic so you don't want to be using anything bigger on a plastic container. And I primarily use plastic in my setup, so I would prefer a lamp myself, but whatever you have available to you uh, should be pretty good for these guys. The rule of housing is the same as it is for any other mantis, three times their length tall, two times their length wide. Um, this is about the minimum I would keep a ghost in, which is a little bit bigger than the ratio, but I tend to not keep mantids in anything smaller than this unless they're a very tiny species, like a Histiosula boxer mantis. They're so small. Hopefully I'll do a care video on them in the future. They're so tiny. They're just really, in general, a really good starter mantis. It's kind of hard to go wrong with these guys. Oh no, my dogs are whining. What do you want? Stop. They're mad that I'm not paying attention to them and I'm paying attention to the bugs instead. I started with a much more complex species than a ghost, and I really wish I had started with a ghost instead. It would have gotten me a little better feel for how complicated mantids or uncomplicated mantids can be. These guys are real chill. They like, they don't, I'm not going to say they like to be handled because I don't think any mantids like to be handled, but they're a lot more relaxed about it. They're less likely to jump off of you. I found even my adult males don't tend to go far if they do, cro they don't tend to fly as much as some other species. They're more content to just sort of sit and wait. They're pretty relaxed. They don't pretty don't really care what you feed them. They're not stressed about heat. Humidity is pretty average. I would keep, say 40, 50, 60 percent, maybe 70. I wouldn't go anywhere below any uh, below 40. Um, I mean, it's okay for your humidity to fluctuate up and down, but I wouldn't try to keep them extended at less than 40 percent humidity. And I would increase that if I suspect they're molting. I'll do a video later on how to determine if your mantis is in pre-molt because that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't talk about is that's the most dangerous time for a mantis. And knowing when they're going into pre-molt can help, I think, save a lot of mantises that miss molt or end up with a rupture and other terrible things. But that's a different video, talking about ghosts. <laughs> talking about ghosts. Um, that's really, there's not much to them. They're great, they're beautiful. Get a ghost, you can't go wrong, they're cheap. They only live a year, great pets, and for the most part, people tend to find them a little less terrifying than the big and green crew, Chinese mantis or European mantis, a lot of people will get startled by them, whereas the ghosts look interesting enough that people are usually less afraid of them. They're more interested, so that's another reason they might be a great starter mantis. If you're trying to convince your parents to let you get a bug, this is a pretty cool one. And that's really, that's really it. They're just great. They're just basic, except they're really cute and they're great. So if you're thinking about getting a mantis, but you're not sure, I would recommend a ghost. It's pretty hard to go wrong with a ghost. I'm not sure which mantis I'm going to do a care video for next. I would much rather wait for my nymphs to mature before I do a detailed care video. It does seem a little wrong to not do a care video and include the adult form of a species. So it may be a few more weeks. I have some in subadult and some in subadult pre-molt right now, so I sh I'll probably do spiny flowers next because that's what I've got upcoming. But it may be a while before I do another one of these. I have a couple other video ideas planned, so I'm gonna try to keep uploading uh, once a week. She really wants out, sorry. She's trying to paw at the ceiling. 
Here she is again, just so you can see her. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it focuses. Oh, oh, she's climbing on my hands. Okay, I'm gonna put her back now, finish the video. Other, a few other quick updates. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, you may notice that I also, I've changed my Instagram to not only feature mantises, but my nail art. So if, don't worry about nail art being on this channel. I decided that I would make a separate YouTube channel for my nail art videos. The link on that is both on my profile and I'll put it down below if you're interested. No pressure. But I have adjusted my Instagram to feature both. So if you're not as interested in seeing the nail art, I won't feel bad if you decide to unfollow me on Instagram. It's okay. I understand. But I still will be posting really cute mantises on there. So maybe if you can look past the nail art, there's still going to be some really cute bugs. Other than that, uh, nothing much has changed. My Facebook's still inactive. And that's really it. I haven't changed much. It's only been a week. But I'm going to keep working on videos, keep getting them out to you. And I'll see you next time.